Um, so I came out actually to help him for two weeks with that camp. And previously before that, like right after my knee surgery and everything, I was kind of I was kind of on the chubby side back then coming off the surgery and stuff. But I got to come out here and help him for Giannis as well. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Contender series. Your opportunity will come very, very soon. Have you been watching the show? Yeah, I've been watching it. I think last week it was, or maybe it was the week before, a Minnesota guy got in, uh, Tom P- Tommy Peterson, I believe, heavyweight. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, I've met him before. I don't, I've never trained with him or anything like that. But, yeah, I've been watching the show uh, when I can catch it. Obviously, when I'm training and stuff during the week, it's hard sometimes. Without a doubt. And, you know, do you think Je- Dana White is being pretty generous this year? It seems like it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I do feel like that's the case. I've heard pretty much every week, almost everybody has been getting contracts, which hopefully that's a good sign for me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, oh, even even the, the girl that didn't get the contract, she got a short notice fight. Yeah, into the UFC. yeah, no, so. definitely. I think uh, ultimately, as long as you perform, you know, the way they want, uh, especially if you're not obviously getting like stopped or anything like that, you, you still have that uh, little sliver of hope to maybe get back in there. If not on the contender again, at least, you know, a short notice call sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. And you know what I mean? Like at least you get, get your face and your name in front of those guys. So they know yes. who you are, you know what I mean? And maybe next time or, you know, maybe yeah. actually not even yeah. next time, this time, you know what I mean? They get yes. you, you know what I mean? They I was going to say, def- definitely it's a cool experience, but most definitely my goal and plan is yeah. to wish. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, man. Let's talk about the fight. Danny Silva, man. What do you think of his style? Um, Honestly, uh, he's, he's awesome to watch. I've watched his last two previous fights for LFA. Um, he's a great striker has really good pressure. I think uh, a lot of guys that he's fought can't really handle it. Um, his, his, he's, he seems like a well-rounded guy, you know, uh, nothing is really lacking. I think he has good power and things like that. I think he's a really good competitor. So I'm excited for this fight. Yeah. It seems like he has a pretty decent killer instinct inside that cage. Yes, definitely. When he hurts somebody, he goes after him for sure. He's very patient too. If he hurts you, he's not, you know, rushing anything. So he's a good fighter. Yeah, so you got to find your your uh, your path to victory in between that, right? Like uh, maybe even have him become over-aggressive, right? Like that could be a possibility. Because, you know, the Contender Series, sometimes guys go out there and they don't fight like they normally did. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that previously. I've seen even not only just the Contender Series, but guys on like uh, – the other show Dana does looking for a fight. Like sometimes there's guys that just don't, you know, they get in front of Dana and some reason they just don't show out or show up the way they normally would. So, uh, I mean, I don't feel I'll do that. Um, I think ultimately we're both pretty seasoned pros. We're both seven and one. So I think we're just going to fight the same way we always do. Um, Ignore the noise and get after it. Um, Like I said, I'm really excited about this fight. Uh, I know it's the toughest test I've had, but I went into this experience kind of looking at it as almost my first UFC fight. He's a UFC caliber fighter, in my opinion, and as am I. Oh, for sure, man. This is one of the, the best matchups coming up in the next couple of weeks, man. Um, the, the layoff, man, the long layoff. What's behind that? Um, so after the Vilsen fight, I had um, a scheduled fight for December. Unfortunately, I, I ended up picking up a knee injury. I tried to train through it, not realizing like how severe it was. It would pop and uh, I wouldn't be able to walk like for a little amount of time and then it would pop again and then it'd be okay. Uh, and then it was like two weeks out from my fight. It popped and it just didn't go back to normal. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So I ended up having to pull out of that fight. I ended up getting surgery actually on the knee um it was just a meniscus but it was a bucket tear I believe it's what they call it so it just kind of took a little bit to uh, rehab and things like that it was kind of a unique uh tear that's pretty much why the long layoff and then uh 
I was going to try to fight in like, uh, I don't want to say February, March or something, but uh, I talked to my coach. Uh, actually, funny story. I was offered the same fight for LFA <laughs> uh, before the fight, but I talked to my coach and he was or my, my manager, sorry, not my coach, uh, Tyson. And he had said, well, we could, you know, maybe take a short notice fight against a tough dude or I'm pretty sure I can get you in contender this year. So I put my trust and faith in him and he got me in. So here we are. There you go, man. There you go. Hey, he's a, he's a good guy. I like him a lot, man. Yeah. He's a yeah. Tyson's phenomenal. the man. Yeah, Definitely. for sure. Um, training camp, man. Actually, before we get into the training camp, the rehab, how was that, man? Cause rehab is not easy. It's actually harder than yeah training you know um, what I mean like it's something that you have to have a lot yeah. of patience with yeah that's that's the biggest thing the patient part about it like I'm very much so like the guy that's like wants to get the surgery and then all right let's go back to the gym let's go spar let's do this uh I took I took it easy you know um I made sure everything kind of came back good because I'm I knew I was in a spot kind of where like I could be getting this call, you know? So I just wanted to make sure everything was going to be okay once I get the okay to train 100%. So it was it was frustrating in the sense of like these little exercises that you think aren't doing much. Um, you know, you're doing it repetition like three times a day and things like that. So it's like, it's frustrating. But at the same time, it was, it was pretty nice also to kind of step back and uh, be able to spend time with my wife and daughter and my family in general, you know? Yeah, definitely. That, that must have been a, a, a great time for you. You know, what I mean? of course, you know, the knee sucks, but yeah, you know, family's That's, always it, yeah, first. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, no, definitely. It's uh, like, it sucks. I got injured, but I feel like it helped me like kind of sit back and be like, this is what I'm doing it for. And like this, yeah. this time I could look at it as, uh, you know, this sucks. I can't train this and that but I can also look at it as, you know, family time. And I love, I'm a very much a family person. So. When did you get back into training, like full blast? I want to say like, it was probably like late February. So yeah. Yeah. So, so you've been from, grinding for a while. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, December, I ended up getting the surgery in like January uh because you know just after all the COVID stuff and everything like stuff's backed up I was pretty lucky to be able to get in as quick as I was actually um but <laughs> yeah uh, the surgeries and stuff if it's like elective things like that it's been tough to kind of get in and get those things done yeah I could only imagine how backed up it is with uh, yeah. especially with surgery man there's only so many doctors out there um yeah. splitting the the training camp where have you been working so I normally train uh, out in Minnesota, St. Cloud, Minnesota with Brock Larson. He's my head coach. And that's at Start BJJ, St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, you know, those guys are my home gym. I constantly grind with them every day. There's a lot of college wrestlers that go through there uh, just because the call the St. Cloud State's right there and things like that. Um, but for this camp, I came out to New Hampshire to work with Rob and Calvin and the entire uh, cartel crew the uh i want to say uh it was like two three months ago rob was supposed to fight uh sung young don i can't remember his name Ch yep chinese fighter um so i came out actually to help him for two weeks with that camp and previously before that like right after my knee surgery and everything I was kind of I was kind of on the chubby side back then coming off the, the surgery and stuff but I got to come out here and help him for Giannis as well um, and that was the first time meeting everybody and training with everybody so uh, I've been out here a couple times uh, helping Rob with two of his camps and then this time I came out here for myself obviously so I'm getting pushed every day it's it's a great uh, the room is full of guys that are around my weight class, if not my weight class. So a lot of 55ers, 45ers, and 35ers, and they're all high level, from the pros to the amateurs. So it's uh, it's no restaurants over here. Yeah, yeah definitely no restaurants <laughs> over there. Um, yeah, it's great to see that you know that they're paying it back. You know that yes, you know that yes, when it's definitely. your time, you're going over there. And I see that Brock Larson's actually with you over there as well. You know, I mean, yeah. a name, you know, familiar yeah. name. If you know MMA. 
for me. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Brock was, you know, UFC vet, WEC vet, 1FC vet, um, fought Carlos Condit for the WEC belt. So uh, that dude's the man. Uh, yeah, he came out here for the first part of the training camp. Um, he couldn't stay the whole three weeks. Obviously, he runs a school uh, gym back at home in Minnesota. So he calls me pretty often, too, and checks on me and makes sure, you know, I'm healthy and everything else. So he's the man. I love that guy. Yeah, man. Those are those are called real teammates, to be honest with yeah. you. You know what I mean? There's guys, yeah. you know, I've been to many gyms around the world. You see guys come in and just leave. They don't talk to nobody. You know, yeah. they're part of the team, but they're just, that's how they are. But then there's guys yeah. that are really invested in each other. You know what I mean? And you really see it in, in practice, even not even in practice. You know I mean, like you said, phone calls, they make a huge difference. Yeah, no, definitely. I love that guy. Seriously, he's like a second father to me almost. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, what are your expectations, man, for this fight coming up on Contender Series? Like, what do you what do you want out of the performance that you're going to have? I just uh, honestly, like the result is not like the biggest thing. Like, obviously, I'm want to win. But I'm saying, like, I don't need a knockout. I don't feel like I need a submission or anything like that. I feel like our fight styles, um, whoever wins the fight is going to get a contract. That's how I truly feel. I do feel like I have the capability to finish him. Um, Honestly, though, I just want to perform. I want to show up and (laughs) not lay an egg. I don't... uh, I don't think that will, that will ever happen at this point in my career, no matter who I fight. Um, it's fighting. Obviously, you never know. You could get caught, knocked out, or something crazy. But uh, to me, as long as I show up, perform to my best ability, my own best ability, that's all I want. And I know that's more than enough to win. Yeah, man. That's what that's what everybody's expecting, man. They expect what you expect, yeah. right? Um, yeah. I got a couple questions about your career so far before we – close it out uh zach schroeder talk me about that situation you know you beat him in the first fight like in a minute something or actually mm-hmm. less than a minute and then you fought him immediately yeah back to back like i know it was for a title and everything but was there yeah. some backstory to that or was it just because it was for the title um so no the original opponent for that uh was supposed to be i think his name is ben pierre saint <laughs> and he's like a 13 and four professional uh I guess he had been talking crazy before saying he could beat me in a fight blah 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 so we both verbally agreed to the fight I probably shouldn't announce anything until like getting the contract and everything I signed my part he didn't take the fight uh, and he's he's a good fighter you know he's a vet or whatever but I think he normally fights at 135 and he ended up going down to 125. Actually, he had made up like a Facebook post, pretty much talking shit about me, my gym, my coach, everything annoying, but whatever. But my only thing is don't, if, if you're online talking about me, don't say you'll beat me in a fight. If you're not willing to sign a contract to fight me. Uh, I didn't realize he was that small. I didn't know he could even make 25. Ain't no way I would ever make 25. So, um, (laughs) <laughs> but yeah so that was my first original opponent and then once he pulled out Brock got a hold of a guy from Atlanta I honestly don't remember his name I know he was like 10 and 5 maybe or something like that tough guy though he was actually uh he beat the guy that beat me as a professional so he made he beat uh Nathan Williams from Atlanta uh and you know he's a good athlete good fighter and stuff but then as the fight got closer, he started kind of getting weird, like, oh, I don't got coaches. Oh, uh, can we make the fight at 55? Things like that. And uh, I kind of learned my lesson with the Nate fight. I, I will not fight above 45 anymore. It's a big man, a big, strong dude. <laughs> so uh, I kind of got held down that entire fight. And uh, it's just it's just different, obviously, fighting at lightweight in comparison to fighting at 45. Uh, so... Yeah, I had a couple different opponents, and Brock was scrambling to get me a fight, and he sh- he kind of like was like, yeah, I'll take the fight. Uh, he he reached out to Brock actually, and that was kind of like Brock's last uh, like like yeah, last option. Um, I I kind of looked at the fight almost as like a not to disrespect him, but it's like a loss loss because 
you beat a guy that you already beat, but then he lasts longer or whatever the case might be. I, I beat him pretty quick the first time. Um, he actually lit a little bit of a fire just because he was saying stuff like, oh, you, you elbowed me in the back of the head illegally and things like that. And like my mom is a is a funny person, but she she's kind of chirping at me the whole time, like son, you can't you know you can't let this guy talk like this, da da da, like getting getting under my skin so that I'd you know get after him. So yeah, that's kind of the backstory of that fight. Uh, I held some like anger or whatever toward it. I talked to him afterward. And I was just like, hey, don't be saying you know I didn't officially beat you that I'm a cheater and things like that is kind of how it came across um and he he was like no no you know that's not the case I never said that sort of thing so I don't know uh what the truth is I guess but that's why we ended up fighting oh there the you go time. man hey you beat him twice in the span of yeah like two months or something like that it's just yeah it's uh yeah, it's definitely. unique you know what I mean not many situations like that are happening now yeah uh, yeah because if you lose to somebody, you probably want to go back yeah. and trade a little bit. And, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you would think. Yeah. But I, I don't know what happened in, in the short amount of time of that fight where he was like, I could get him. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get him. Yeah. I don't know if he truly believed it was like the back of the head or, and that's what dazed him or whatever. But the fight ended essentially the same way. Yeah, man, it's over, man. You you 2-0 and against him, man. Anyways. September 26th, Contender Series, UFC Apex. Thank you so much, man, for taking the time to chat and uh, all the best in this fight coming up. Like I said earlier, it's one of the best uh, matchups, like matchmaking-wise, one of the best, like you said, it, you guys are both up there, UFC caliber. No, I completely agree. I'm excited.